Hello and welcome back to the series on how to make a data pack in Minecraft Java Edition. My name is CodeZealot and today we're picking back up with part 4 where we're going to learn how to add some new functions to our data pack to create an economy system. What we're going to do with this economy system in today's video is create some signs that allow players to both buy and sell items and to be able to see their currency there in the scoreboard objective sidebar. So let's jump into Sublime Text and see how we can make this happen. Right now I'm looking at our main.mc function file, and you may notice that here on line 22 I have added some code, so let's go ahead and look at that first. What I've done here is I've added another function call in our data pack, which is going to execute all of the code inside of this file that is located inside of a new directory called players. So let's go ahead and look at this file and see why we are calling it here in our main loop. Remember, anything that we call here in our main loop will run every single tick. And so we want to run this code continuously. So let's figure out why we want to do that. If we go over here to the sidebar and drop down the players directory, which we've just added, go inside of our new function here called init underscore new and see that we have a single command in here that we'll be running over and over. Now, what this command is doing is basically every time a new player joins our world, we're going to be setting a value to zero for them for the objective of CZ money. Now, we need to do this because whenever you create a scoreboard objective, players are not given any value. So if you do not give a player a value for a scoreboard, they will never get one unless there's some way inside of your data pack for that to be actually assigned to a player, or in other words, initialized. And so what we want to do is every time a new player joins our world, we want to go ahead and give them a value of zero for the objective CZ money, which is going to be our currency system. So the reason we're running this on loop, if you haven't figured it out, is because if you run it only one time, say for example, if you were gonna run this inside of your init.mc function file that we created earlier, it would run once, but then any time a player joined the server after that, they would never be initialized personally. And so we need a way to manage players and to init players for things such as scoreboard objectives and in the future, maybe tags and things like that. So let's go ahead now and jump into our world where we need to go ahead and install this objective with the script we wrote last time and install that MC function, and then we'll be able to see it in action. So let's jump into here and go ahead and run our data packs init function. If you remember inside of our init function, we had a function call to our uh, install script. And so when we run this, it's gonna run our init and that is gonna call our install and that is going to add our scoreboard objective. And if we wanna verify that it was actually added to the world, we can type out scoreboard objectives list and we will see that we have two objectives, CZ money and CZ boolean, which we've been using in the past for our auto init functionality. Now, now that we have the scoreboard objective, let's go ahead and throw it on the sidebar with scoreboard objective set display sidebar and displaying now CZ money. And we can see that I have a value of zero. Now, if you were remembering what I was saying earlier, Minecraft does not give players a value by default when you create a new objective. And so how do I have the value of zero? Well, if we go back into our code and take a look, we can see that inside of our main.mc function file, we are calling this init new function. And this init new function is giving all players the value of zero for this objective. And so as soon as I joined the world, I was given the value of zero because this was being called inside of our main loop. And so that's how you can initialize new players in your world as they join over time. Now let's see how we can go ahead and set up the currency system. And I've went ahead and added another new directory to our data pack called shops because we want to keep everything nice and organized. And so all of the code that is going to have to do with the buying and selling of specific items in specific shops on our Minecraft world is going to be contained inside of this directory. So if we open up this directory, we can see that I have created a name for a shop. I've just chosen blacksmith bill because why not? And inside of blacksmith bill, we have two more directories one for buying items and one for selling items. So let's go ahead now and look at buying an item using our new data pack functionality. If we look inside of our buy directory, we can see that I have two more subdirectories here. And the reason for this is because I want a way to have the code for the specific item that we're gonna be working with, in this case, coal. And I also wanna have a special shop sign that I can give myself at any time. And so I have the code for that in here as well. And you can see that I'm using the same name for these files because they're for the same exact item. And so we can go inside of this coal.mc function file that is inside of our item directory and see how we can start setting up the buy functionality. Once we're inside of here, we see that we have only a few commands and it's actually quite simple to set up some sort of a shop system. And so we're gonna do the most simple approach here 
and just do some simple give uh, for the item and some simple subtraction for the objective. So let's look now at what's happening in each of these commands so we understand this functionality. In the first line here, we have this give command. And the give command is using the target selector of at s. And the reason for this is because we're targeting the executing entity. And since we're gonna be using right clickable signs, the person who right clicks the sign is at s. They are the person executing the command. And so we're gonna use this as our target selector. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and do a simple test. And what we're testing for is if they have enough money to buy the item. And so in this case, we have set the value or the price of coal to be 10 currency. And so let's jump into Minecraft real quick so we can take a break of looking at Sublime Text and see these buy signs so we can get a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about. So here we have the sell sign and here we have the buy sign. And as you can see, I have the value here listed as $10 or 10 currency or 10 CZ money, if you'd like to call it that. And this tells the player that when they right click this sign, they will be charged 10 and they will be given the item of coal because they are they are engaging in a transaction. They are giving me money, or in this sense, giving the server money to get a specific Minecraft item, which we are going to be specifying as coal in our text file. So let's jump back in the text file so we can finish understanding this uh, functionality, and then we'll move on to looking at the cell functionality. So after we have tested whether or not they have at least 10 currency, because that is the price of the item, we are going to use the scoreboard command to remove from the same target entity, which is the person right-clicking the sign. So we're using at s for executing entity. We're going to remove 10, the value of 10, from their objective CZ money, which is basically their virtual bank account. And so once we have given them the item and we have taken away their money, we have completed the transaction. And so the next two lines are just basically notifications. We have two tell raw commands, and I'm not going to explain everything here because it's pretty self-explanatory, but basically we are just telling them whether or not they bought the coal or if they didn't have enough money. So next up, let's jump now into the cell directory, and we'll see that it's actually very simple here to have the same sort of functionality, but reversed. So what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to be selling. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be giving the player money because they're selling the item, so they need to be given money. And so we're going to do a simple test here for MBT data, and we're going to check if they have coal inside of their Minecraft inventory. Because remember, we're using right-click signs, and so we don't want to give them 10 CZ money unless they actually have some coal to sell. So we're testing if coal is in their inventory, and if it is, then we're going to go ahead and give them 10. Now, if we didn't do anything else at this point, our shop would be broken, our sell sign would be broken, because we would be giving away free money, because... We have given them money, but we haven't taken away the item that we are going to buy. And so in this case, we need to be removing coal. And so at the bottom here, you can see that I have a clear command that is going to remove one coal from the player. Now, we have two more commands right here, which are notifications, just like last time. And they're just going to say you don't have any coal to sell, or you actually went ahead and you sold the coal. So now that we've seen this sell functionality, let's go ahead now and take a look at it in game and get a feel for how this is going to work. So if I open up this chest, I can go ahead and grab some of this coal. And now I can go ahead and sell it by right clicking this sign. And you will see on the sidebar as I right click, I am now going to be gaining money. And so I've right clicked it and now I've sold one coal for $10. And every time that I click this, you can see down in the action bar below, I am losing one coal, but I'm gaining 10 currency. And the reverse is true. If I go over here and I want to buy coal, if I right click this, the sidebar will now deduct 10 from the value of CZ money and it will give me coal. And so every time I right click, I am getting one coal and I'm losing $10. And if I continuously do this, you'll see eventually it'll tell me I don't have enough money. And if we wanted to make this even better, we could make these notifications uh, test a little better and we can make them look a little fancier. But for now, this is just an example. And so that's what we have. So there you go. There is the buy and sell functionality for these signs. But now the question arises, <clears throat> excuse me, how can we get these signs to be able to use them? Well, inside of our data pack, if you remember, we also added a directory for signs. And so let's take a look at the code for getting ourselves some buy and sell signs. So here we are now inside of the coal.mc function file for buying an item, and this is just for getting the sign that allows us to buy the item. And it's just one command. 
It's a pretty long give command. And what this give command is doing in its simplest form is it's giving the player an oak sign. And so we want to give them an oak sign, but we want to give them an oak sign with some information on it. So if you look here, you can see that the oak sign has a name, which is blacksmith bill for buy coal. And we've also given it some lore text. So when you hover over it inside of your inventory, it'll show $10. So let's go ahead and take a look at that so we can keep everything straight in our mind. So if I go ahead and control pick block there, I'll get the, the sign with the data on it. And it doesn't look like it's going to display nicely for me. So let me just go ahead and grab it like this. So there we go. I've just given myself the buy sign. And you can see that we have our custom name. And we also have the lore text there that we were talking about for the $10 display. Next up, if we go back into our text file, we can see the most important part, which is putting the text on the sign and also running the command we need to run in our data pack. And so here we have text line one. And if you look through here, you can see we have text line two and so on and so forth for three and four as well. Now, inside of these, these text line uh, data things we're giving here, we're giving a name of buy, we're giving a color of light purple, and we're bolding the text, but then we're doing something very special, which is adding a click event. And this is what makes all of this possible because when, by adding this click event, we are able to give an action, in this case, run command, that takes a value, which is the command we wanna run. And so here we are telling the game, we wanna go ahead and run a function every time a player right clicks the sign. Every time there's a click event on, si on the sign here, we wanna run a command and the command we wanna run has the value of function and then our namespace and then the directory path here to the function, in which case is going to be inside of our shop for blacksmith bill in his buy directory, inside the list of items inside of his directory for items, and then the name of the file or the function itself is going to be the name of the item, so coal in this case. Now, everything else is basically here just to tell the player how much everything cost and to let them know that this is a buy sign, so we're not gonna look at all of that in detail. Let's jump now over to the other sign for selling, and we'll see it's basically the same exact command, only we're swapping out some of the text. You know, this is now sell coal instead of buy coal, and we've now changed our function to be in a different directory. So now we're going into blacksmith bill, but then we're going into his cell directory and then everything else is the same after that since that's how we set it up. And so there you go, guys. This is how you can set up your own sign shops inside of your own data pack that we're gonna be creating here together inside of Minecraft Java edition. Now, if you guys are interested in Bedrock Edition, I also have a Bedrock channel, so be sure to go ahead and check that out. I will leave the description down below so you can check that out. And also be sure to follow me on Twitter. I've been tweeting a lot on there. And so if you guys want to follow any of the news related to the data packs that I've been developing and the release dates and just see some of the things I'm creating that I post pictures of over there, go ahead and follow me there on Twitter. So guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm Codezillit, and I'll see you guys in the next video.